Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another Destiny video. Now in today's video, I am going to finally get around to it. Sorry it's taken so long. I've been meaning to do this one for a while, but it's just been a really busy week at work. Just before the Christmas holidays and all that kind of stuff. So I've only just got around to doing this one, but I'm going to finally show you how to take down Crota. Now I've done this a fair few times since the DLC has dropped. So we sort of improved on the technique every single time we do it. But what I wanted to do, I was trying to think of the best way to bring this to you guys. And I thought, you know what I'll do? Instead of sort of doing my usual thing where I kind of cut in certain different sections. And you know, sort of say like, this is one of the key mechanics. This is how you do this. This is how you do that. I thought what might be more helpful to you guys is to actually just talk over the entire fight. We actually defeated Crota in just under 7 minutes, 6 minutes 58. I counted that from the second the barriers went down. And yeah, so I figured, you know, it might be slightly more helpful for me to actually just talk through what happened throughout the whole thing. So that is what I'm going to do. Also, apologies if I sound slightly different. I've been sort of fighting off this kind of like flu, cold kind of thing. So apologies for that one. But anyway, let's get into the fight. So first up, you will spawn in this room, which you are no doubt familiar with. This is where you just fought Iyu at the Death Singer, that really annoying witch, and you're now standing next to the Summoning Crystal. When you stand right next to it, your screen will go green, or watch your whole team stand next to it, and then the doors in front of you will seal, and this marks the beginning of the fight. The rooms in front of you will then start to fill with enemies, typically two knights and about four, five, maybe six acolytes, something like that, and that's a mirror set up on both sides. So you want to sort of split your team into three, have three guys shooting right and three guys shooting left. You'll also notice on your screen a thing called the Presence of Crota. Now this is a debuff which basically stops you from regenerating health. So all while you're fighting in this room, you want to make sure you try to sort of keep your, like, tam your damage taken to a minimum because if you are on red health, then you're not going to be able to heal until you pick up a particular item, which I'll talk about in just a second. Now once you've cleared out this room, what you then want to do is agree on a place you want to fight from. Now in this particular fight, we actually fought from the left staircase. We have since changed our tactic and I'll talk about that in a second, but for the time being, as soon as we cleared that room, I then turned around and then started running towards the left-hand side. As soon as you look out the stairs, up in the tower on the left, there will be two snipers. We call them boomers just for kind of like call-out references. But there are two snipers or two like massive knights that shoot these massive booming rifles. You want to take them down because they can often one-shot your team. Then down on the ground, you'll find a hell of a lot of thrall. But alongside that, you will see a familiar face, the sword bearer. Now, just like before on the bridge fight, if you take him down, he drops his sword. And this is the key mechanic for taking down Crota. See, bullets can't hurt Crota. They can't take his life bar down, but what they can do is drop his shield. The sword is where you'll be dealing damage. So, here, for example, I am the sword bearer. I'm running up here, getting in place, and my team are shooting Crota. They're taking his shield down, which is the white life bar just above his sort of, like, yellow life bar. And as soon as the shield is down, he will drop to his knee. You then have a very small window of opportunity to go in and deal some damage. And then if you're fast and you kind of do it in the right way, you can actually get two cycles of damage on him before the sword despawns. Just like before, the sword will despawn. So you can see here, I'm in my second wave of attack and then you need to get out. The important thing is here, do not be greedy. If you try and get too many hits in, Crota will get up and he will slap you down. Do not think you're going to sort of survive that. One hit, he will kill you. So, right now we've sort of done two bouts of damage on him. He's now run to the right. So we're going to stay here, heal up for a second, which is done through the Chalice of Light. I, think, I forgot to mention that earlier, but there's an item right in the middle of the room as soon as you start called the Chalice of Light. And whoever's holding it can regenerate health. So what you need to do is pass it around your team just by pressing X or pressing and holding X. And then make sure you manage that. But what you want to do as well is whenever the sword bearer is running up, make sure he is holding the chalice. If he's not and he takes some damage from Crota, it's going to make his life a hell of a lot harder. So... Once you've done your first two bouts of damage, you then regroup, heal up as I said, and then you get ready for the second sword bearer. Two sword bearers will spawn, which will allow you to get four waves of damage before the next phase of the fight. So again, we need to watch out for the snipers as you're seeing up here, these two guys there. At some point, once you've taken these guys down, another knight will come out, but he'll actually be a sword knight, so you want to watch out for him. But he's sort of, you know, he's only a red life bar, so he's quite easy to deal with. But again, the door in the middle has just opened, and the, uh, the sword bearer is just about to run out. So the sword bearer is out, we're going to kill him again, take him down, grab the sword. Now bear in mind, you need to communicate with your team. I am me, I need my team to start shooting Crota as soon as I'm on this rock. This gives me enough time to jump up, get in place, and as he's going down on his knee, I can then start moving in. For example here, this is actually quite good timing, it probably could have been a little bit better, but I was right at his feet just as he dropped down. Now, bear in mind there are different combos you can do with the sword as well. See, at this point, I'm actually using the right bumper combo, which is not actually the most effective. That effectively is six right bumper hits, or you know, like five depending on my timing. And then that sort of like allows me enough time to get out and I can use right bumper to get myself out. Now what's better off and what we've started doing in recent fights is actually using right bumper, right bumper, right trigger. Which will then do a kind of like two swings and then an upward slash. And you can normally link that again into another right bumper, right bumper, right trigger. So once you've done four bouts of damage, your entire team now wants to run down here. Which is to the central chamber, which is where you dropped in from the previous section. The reason you're going down here is because after two sword bearers, ogres will spawn, two of them. 
So you need to line up here, they will gradually walk towards you and you'll get visibility on them from the central chamber and you can then snipe them and take them down. So what you're going to see here is we're sort of like getting in place. In fact, if you've got a Titan here, have them drop a bubble with weapons of light at the back to give you some added damage. But the main thing is stay in the sort of, you know, the wings of this corridor. Do not stand in the center because if you do, then you're going to be in for a world of hurt when the ogres start coming in. There we go. As you can see, there's the arm of the first ogre. So one of our teammates actually got a nice sort of like void bar out there, but we're actually going to sort of like primarily snipe him with our icebreakers. Try not to use rocket launchers just because if someone drops weapons of light and it kills you, you want to avoid that oversold spawning at any time. So we took those down quite fast, so we're then going to run back out. And typically here, we're actually going to loop right because at this point, Crota will be on the left. So we don't want to run back up the staircase, otherwise he will beat the entire team down. When running back up into this room, you do want to bear in mind that what you're going to go and do is jump into the right-hand side door, or the left if you are looking at it from the front, and you're then going to run past all these enemies. Do watch out for the exploding thrall. Most of them you can kind of sort of run past and pick up, you know, once you kind of pass them. But the exploding ones you do want to take care of, because if they sneak up behind you and blow up, then you're again going to be in for a world of pain. Ideally, this entire run needs to be done as efficiently as possible. If you can do it without anyone dying, it means you'll do it as quickly as possible, because what you don't want to do is take too much time. You take too much time and Crota will go into enrage mode, and believe me when I tell you right now, you most likely will not be able to deal with him. He goes into enrage mode, starts spawning oversoul after oversoul after oversoul, so many of them in quick succession that you just basically spend all your time taking them down, and it is an absolute nightmare. So, we're now back on the left hand staircase, there's another sword bearer, so we're going to repeat the entire process once again, take him down and move in for some more damage. Again, do watch out for those exploding thralls. What you don't want to do is be a sword bearer and have to jump over one of them, have them detonate and kill you. So again, we're getting up here in place, standing on the rock. I can actually jump up here to sort of like avoid sort of closer shots. And then again, I was there sort of a little bit late again. I was actually moving towards him and I didn't get quite as many hits in. So that was probably quite sort of weak damage. But again, at least you're sort of getting out. The most important thing is survive. You know, if you go in, you get too many hits and you know, you just get beat down by Crota. It's just going to be, you know, worse off for you in the long run. Now you see there, for example, I actually slipped off the rock, which means I messed up my timing and Crota moved to the left hand side, which is really bad because by the time I actually get to him, my sword will despawn. So there's not actually any point fighting him. So you want to try and do this to avoid people sort of like chasing Crota. Ideally, as many of your battles as possible should take place in the middle unless you are under pressure of enrage, in which case you need to fight wherever he is. The other thing worth mentioning is that ideally if you can, your sword bearer should be a level 31 or 32 if you can, but doing it as a level 30 you will do so little damage even with the right combo. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it is going to be a hell of a lot more difficult. It's going to take you a lot more runs and that chance of getting in rage mode is going to be so much higher. So if you can have a level 31 run with it, it's going to make your life a hell of a lot easier. Honestly, we can do this in about four sword runs now, you know, in fact maybe three if we've got the right rotation. So really it's all about timing and having the right levels. For the people shooting Crota, I've heard a lot of people saying, oh, you know, you have to do it with the Galahorn. If you don't have a Galahorn, you can't do it. That is not true. Let me tell you right now, so long as you have some good weapons and you fire together and you have constant fire on him, that's the main thing. It's the most important thing. If you're all firing slowly and there's big gaps in between your shots, his shield will regenerate and then you won't be able to do any damage because he'll run away and then you've just kind of like messed up your entire rotation. So while Galahorns do often make things easier, you know, if you've got them, by all means use them. Do not by any means think you have to use them at all. Obviously our guys right there did use them. Typically what we do is one of our guys in our team has got a Galahorn. So the first wave he's taken down with gunshots and the second wave he's taken down with Galahorn. And that gives us maximum time to sort of try and actually get him down twice without him running away. So that is it for the time being. Now hopefully you followed that. Hopefully it was actually kind of like useful to you guys. I do appreciate it. I was probably going a little bit fast so apologies if that's the case. If you have any questions do drop a comment down below. Really want to sort of help you guys out. But again you know, I'm slightly ill so I'm trying to sort of like keep this short for you guys but actually still informative. So. Anyway, if you did enjoy this video and you did find it helpful, hit that like button down below, the little thumbs up button that does really help me out. And obviously don't forget to subscribe so you can come back for daily gaming videos. And also don't forget to hit me up on Twitter. It's a lot easier for me to reach out to you guys on Twitter just because, you know, sometimes when I'm on the train or like on the go, it's a lot easier to kind of like manage. So if you're trying to sort of get in contact with me, then do hit me up on there. Uh, you can find a link to that in the description box down below. And otherwise it's just at A-R-E-K-K-Z. But otherwise, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.